Hello and welcome. A special welcome to you if you're a fellow Drive Tribe refugee. If you are, leave me a comment. Um, it'd be great to catch up. Um, what today's video about is about electric cars and first stage of learning electric cars. Now, anyone who did buy a Drive Tribe will remember that I spent five years saying how much I disliked electric cars and I would never have one. Um, around two years ago, uh, anyone from Drive Tribe will remember me talking about buying this. Now, I've been using this as my daily drive for the last two years and all in all it's been pretty fantastic. It's a great car to drive, it's uh, usable in all weathers, it's surprisingly practical. I've even done DIY trips by sticking long bits of wood through the sunroof and holding them in place um, with, a, with a passenger and a, and a bungee and, and that's worked very well. There's, there's not really a lot to complain about this car as a daily drive, but it's now become a occasional car, a sort of car shows and an I can to the country car. And anyone who follows me on Drive will be wondering why. Um, so before I get onto the electric car, I just want to briefly touch on that. The first thing is, um, it's a 3.8 litre flat six. I average around 18 miles per gallon, possibly because I tend to drive it quite enthusiastically. It, it uses quite a lot of fuel. You don't get many miles per gallon, but I admit you do get lots of smiles per gallon. So it does kind of work out as good value. The second point, and I think probably the more important one, is that it's now on over 82,000 miles and i realise that I've generally been doing five to 6,000 a year and if I keep doing five to 6,000 a year, eventually it is going to die. Um, and I kind of want to keep the car as long as possible, um, indefinitely, um, ideally. But for me to do that, I need to drive it less. What I will say is, Driving it every day and having it as a daily drive is a great way to enjoy a car, even if it's something a bit rare and a bit special, something a bit interesting. You only really get to enjoy a car properly when you have it as your daily driver. However, at the same time, it does get to the point where after two years, it maybe doesn't feel as special when you get in as it ought to, and maybe it's you can rekindle that feeling a little bit by stopping using it so much and getting something else to drive. So that's what I've been driving. I'm not getting rid of it, I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to drive it occasionally, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to try and keep it for a long, long time. And to be honest, yes, it's a lot of fun on an open A road, but it's a manual, it's quite low down, it's, it's, it's not necessarily a lot of fun when you're sitting queuing in, tra in traffic, constantly manipulating the clutch. So the next question you're going to ask is, what did I get? And, and and what were the hows and where's and when's of it? So I'll talk about that next. So, after two years of having my 911 as a daily drive, I decided I was going to get an electric car and start saving the uh, 911. The way I did it is I'm actually leasing it as a company car and that's working out very well for me. Um, it's it's a, it's a great it's a great deal. I'm paying about three hundred pounds a month, and for, and the fuel cost is almost negligible. And what I've actually ended up having is this. It's a uh, Nissan Leaf Tecna, and I'll be honest. When I was looking for one, my initial thoughts were I really need the Leaf Plus for the extra range. To me, the 160 mile range sounds a bit short, um, particularly when you look at Nissan's range calculator and you see that when you put the heating on and the temperature drops and you start driving it outside of the optimal 45 to 65 miles an hour, that range starts to plummet quite significantly. Um, it was a bit of a concern, but to get the Leaf Plus, it would have cost me something like an additional £100 on the lease. 
and I didn't really want to pay that much. And I actually started thinking about then, 160 miles, where will that take me? How, how, will, how, how will that service my needs? Can I do all the trips I need to do in 160 miles? And I thought, you know, I can probably do most of the driving I need to do in a day. 100 miles is probably plenty, even without charging up wherever I'm going to. So I decided I'd get the, um, the normal Leaf Tekka. How's it been working out for me? Well, I'll be honest, it's, it's actually been pretty good. Better than I expected. Um, to put it into context, the, I, I had it delivered on a Friday, and then the next day, uh, I live in Stoke-on-Trent, and the next day I went to a chess event. It was the um, EPSCA England team tryout for my 11-year-old uh, son and at Liverpool. And I actually took the electric car the next day on that trip. By the time I got there, it was started out on a full charge. By the time I'd got to the hotel and got to the chess event and all that kind of jazz, I'd still got like 90 odd miles left. So started with 160 in theory, I could easily have made it ha home on one charge. I didn't, I found a public charger at um, a McDonald's actually on the, I think, the Instavolt network because I wanted to try public charging and see how that actually worked and the fact is it worked fairly well. It was at a shopping centre up in Liverpool and there were free chargers where you could, a uh, three kilowatt charge where you could plug in for free and go and do a bit of shopping and come back and get some free energy. But we didn't want to use it because we didn't want to eat at the restaurant which was there, the McDonald's or the Chiquita across the road. Um, and you don't get much charge in 10 minutes of waiting on one of those. So I signed up to the Instavolt and uh, we went and got some stuff from the Marks and Spencers to take back to the hotel room. It cost me about £4.50 to put about 50 odd miles into the car, which actually works out probably at a sim similar cost to an economical diesel. But for convenience sake, being able to charge while you're uh, you're away and charge quickly because in 10 minutes I put 50 miles in. That was good. That worked out well. Normally, most most of the charges you see tend to be more like 20, 25 to 30 p a kilowatt. The Instavolt ones, certainly this one was 50, so that was like the top most expensive end of it. The fact is, for 99% of my daily driving, I, I just charge it up at home or at work, uh, and it's essentially nearly free, not quite free. The range anxiety thing hasn't really been an issue. As for what it's like to drive, it's actually fantastic. It's uh, far better than I expected. I mean, it's in some ways, it's at some parts of the, let's say, it, it, sometimes it actually almost feels a little bit more talky than even the Porsche. Uh, you know, obviously, with it when you're driving a petrol engine car, where you are in the rev range means that you've got more or less torque on tap. Whereas on the on the Nissan, it tends to be very instant and very uh, consistent up until uh, up until a point. And there's obviously no gears, so driving in traffic is um, a lot easier. It's a very smooth drive. It's very quiet. You really notice that when you start driving an electric car. To, um, to start with, that it's so much quieter than um, obviously the Porsche, but even the, um, the diesel Toyota there, which sounds somewhat like a tractor. Um, so it is actually a very enjoyable, very fine drive. Very practical car, you can fit a lot in it. Um, one of the reasons I chose a Leaf was because it's one of the few um, cars which has V2X capability. So you can take energy from one place for example, you can charge it for free at Tesco while you do your shopping, then you can use that energy at home if you've got the appropriate um, car charger, which, which will do vehicle to home, vehicle to grid and that sort of thing. Um, so I'm not utilising that yet. I haven't actually had a home charger installed yet because I haven't figured out which one to get or even whether I can get one that does what I want to do. But that's what I'm looking to do eventually. We've got a lot of solar energy at work, so I, um, and I can charge at work for free. So. I, there's the potential that I could actually charge to 100% at work, bring it home, use 20% of the battery to run the house, 
then charge it up at night, which is cheap. That's the sort of things that I, I, I'm hoping we'll get up there to take advantage of. I did look at one before I ordered it, and I looked at a Corsa E. They were the two. The Corsa E was cheaper. That would have worked out around £100 cheaper a month to lease. But I'll be honest, it's fine. it was fine. But in comparison to the Leaf, it felt like a very small, very cheap car. Uh, whereas the Leaf actually feels quite premium inside. It's got leather seats. It's got quite nice. It's still a bit of cheap plastic here and there. It's it's not a, an Audi or a BMW. But for a Japanese car, it feels, to me at least, quite a premium car. And it's very nice to drive. I figured out the other day that I've done... Um, I mean, since I've had it, I've had it less than a month now. And I've probably, by the miles I've done in the Nissan, if they were exchanging for Porsche miles, because I get around 18 miles per gallon, petrol's about 160 odd, and I compare that to, it looks like I'm probably saving, saving so far nearly 200 pounds worth of fuel, which I haven't spent. And also there's no wear and tear and additional mileage on the Porsche, doing miles which don't necessarily, you get the, the maximum enjoyment out of. Would I recommend an electric car to somebody? I would say, depends on how you drive. If you're going up and down the motorway lot and you're constantly having to use public charging, I don't think they're necessarily right for you. If they are, you're probably going to want to choose the right one, which has got a really good long range on and is quick to charge. I think Toyota's announcement about solid state batteries is really exciting. And we, um, you know, that could be a real game changer in the terms of electric cars but as a kind of everyday normal run around car to get you about locally I absolutely cannot complain about um, the Leaf. I'll quickly give you a bit of a tour show you what it's like in case you've not seen one. So this is the interior of the Leaf again they've got the uh, leather and leather effects and suede seats which are very comfortable. You do find yourself sitting quite high up in the car which is obviously because of the uh, battery underneath the seats there it's got um, Apple CarPlay and it's got a nice big uh, touch screen and it's got a volume knob which I like I find that a lot easier than having to find things and tap things when you're operating it this is the main control dial and you've got various settings you can use on here if you depending on uh, what you want to know about while you're driving this one's most useful basically um this little blue bit that says eco that tells you that you're driving to get the maximum range out of your car if you start to accelerate more then your average range is going to go down and your 100 percent battery is going to show less than 160 miles the other side of this is how much regenerative braking you're getting and uh, obviously in the middle, you've got the current range. So at the moment, it's saying I'm on 82% and we've got 132 miles. So I've probably been driving fairly economically lately. In terms of the uh, gears, um, these are the basic controls. This is how you turn it on here. Those are your heated seats. Those are your climate controls. Then we've got Eco here, which actually it's a lot nicer and easier to drive with that on. You less likely to get wheel spin. It seems to encourage a sort of soft start with the motor this is the e-pedal and that kind of it feels very similar to uh, one pedal driving that does in terms of the actual gear stick this is it it's got a park button on top then you've got forward for reverse and then backwards and obviously you've got the uh, 360 degree and reversing camera there if you press backwards it'll go into drive mode and then if you press backwards again It'll go into B mode, and that B is um, extra regenerative braking essentially. If you push this one here, then you'll see the E pedal icon is lit up, and that means now when you take your foot off, it's going to kind of use the motor to brake a, a little bit more, and it it allows you to pretty much drive with just one with one foot on the accelerator. Probably a good idea to make sure you use the brakes occasionally because if you don't use them at all, they're just going to get rusted up and uh, I, I, I can imagine they're not going to be as a... Uh, it's not going to do them much good never being used and just sitting there and rusted. 
pretty good headroom in here pretty comfortable seats you are sitting quite high up um for the car i think it, it, it kind of feels a little bit suv for that but i guess it's because of the batteries in the floor and that's pretty much the uh the cockpit i'll show you the rear so as you can see it's actually pretty roomy back here it feels a little bit like the verso um similar headroom still good headroom here i'm five foot eleven and i've got a good this much uh, before i hit my head plenty of knee room one thing i do feel is that you sit a little bit lower in this car whether that's because of the the shape of the roof line or the way the um, the batteries fit into the floor and there's also weirdly even though it's an electric car there's quite a transmission tunnel down there but actually it's pretty comfy back here and pretty spacious the main difference is in the rear so you get three separate seats in the leaf you only get a bench seat um so it's for two people it's going to be very comfortable for three it's it's going to lose it because of the bench seat and the transmission tunnel which i'll show you because it is quite surprising so this is it we've got heated seats in the rear here as well and the power socket so there's two usb there and you've also weirdly got this transmission tunnel which i have literally no clue what that is for um but it does mean the middle seat is a little bit of a compromise in the middle and the um the other thing about the middle seat i'll which i'll have to cover is this now my son gets um a little bit car sick on long journeys and in the leaf it's it's actually worse because it's so quiet and so smooth um we can't go more than 20 minutes with him unless he sits in the middle so he has to use this middle seat and look out that front window otherwise he gets quite queasy um it's it's if you don't get car sick at all i imagine it may not affect you but even the daughter who doesn't get car sick says that on sort of longest journey sitting in the back when you can't see where you're going and it's it feels so sort of smooth she starts to feel a little bit queasy as well so that's something i don't know maybe it's it's just us but have other people experienced that i don't know if you have let me know in the comments now this is the um boot to the nissan leaf it's uh, obviously got a 60 40 folding split rear seat you get two little cargo nets to keep your charging cables here and here and this is the bose sound system that you get with the techno now there's a big lip to get things over to get into this boot what i and these seats if you fold these down these finish around about here so you you don't get a flat loading bay what i think actually happened here and i may be wrong about this this is only my conjecture but i think there's going to be a false floor here and the cables and the bows of thing we're going to sit underneath and you're going to get a flat load bay with these seats but i think somebody at nissan says well actually you know there's a lot of space under there which we can put into the figures for how big the boot is it'll make it seem like a more practical car and actually maybe people don't mind and would rather have the space than have a flat load bay i've got no evidence for that it's just my theory that's what i think happened um, but yeah, it's a pretty practical car. It's got a decent boot. You can fold the seats down. The issue is you don't get that nice, you've got this big lip here and you don't get that nice flat load bay. But I think that's why you don't get that nice flat load bay. I mean, it's overall quite a smart looking car and it's also a decent size family car. Unlike the Corsa E, which I think would have been a bit of a compromise. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. And I think, you know, I may even be tempted to change the Toyota for an electric car too. Because so far, it's been going great.